welcome to the online discussion Queer Border Crossing Experiences in Europe. It's about the situation of LGBTIQ people with flight experiences in Europe and especially also in Austria. And it's held here by the Afro-Asian Institute Salzburg in cooperation with Afro Rainbow Austria and Hosi Salzburg. And um, today we have the contributor Paris Chuchi um, from Afro Rainbow with us. Um, he is um, he came uh, from Ethiopia three years ago and migrated here and he's a is a refugee. And he's also a project coordinator in Queer Base at the moment. And um, Paul Haller from Hosi Salzburg and currently also um, he's the policy advisor of the Greens for the LGBTIQ issues and uh, will be moderating the discussion. So welcome to you too. I'm, I'm Maya Lo from the Afro Asian Institute Salzburg. I forgot to say this. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> thank you very much for being here, Paris Chuchi and Paul Haller and yeah. <laughs> I invite you to the discussion. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Faiz Kuchi. Uh, I'm an active member of our, um, um, Afro Rainbow Austria. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Afro Rainbow Austria. And then uh, th I would like to also to thank um, Afro Asia and Institutes based in Salzburg for organizing this event. Um, and also my co-host, Paul. Uh, and I'm super happy that <laughs> to be here and then to see also um, the ARA founder, uh, Henry um, Ma Maira Liat, <laughs> yes, Tino, and yeah. So this is awesome. <laughs> Okay, thank you also for organizing this event today. My name is Paul. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm an activist at Jose Salzburg and currently I work for the Green Party in the National Parliament. But today is going to be all about Faris Kuchi and your activism and your insights, your experiences and views on queer refugees. And let me just start by asking you, uh, you work for ARA, or you're like an activist at ARA, Afro Rainbow Austria, which is a very important uh, organization in Austria. Can you tell us a little bit about ARA? Um, uh, okay, before we go on, also, like, um, I'm, I'm actually here on behalf of uh, ARA. <laughs> so it's more, uh, I would like more to focus and center more on the um, activities and the work as uh, that what ARA does. Um, and like, just to give a very brief introduction, even though everybody knows what ARA does <laughs> here. Um, um, so Afro Rainbow Austria is the first African, um, refugee and African descent, um, queer organizations that is founded, um, um uh, almost three years ago. Um, we do a lot of uh, visibility um, on work and also different uh, supports of um, queer African and Afri uh, African with migrant uh, background and all the necessary things to exist actually um, in Austria because by default there is um, also an understanding of like um, whenever people, for instance, see black queer or black body here, there, there is an automatic uh, relations with um, refugees, but it's beyond that. So um, it's that. And then we want also to highlight on the fact, like, you know, the layered, uh, identities and also um, an operation that comes with that layered identity of being black, being queer, and being in this intersectional space um, where you can be pushed away for being black and pushed away for being queer and 
that need a, a highlight and that need a visibility work that need a lot of uh, structural and policies work as well. And so basically that's how Afro Rainbow is centered and that's what we do. Okay. And you're also very active in another organization called Queer Base, which is very actively supporting queer refugees. And you're there, you're the project manager for a project called Safe Queer Belonging, which is focusing on mental health issues in the context of queer refugees. Yeah. So what do you do in this project? Why is it important? Uh, um, it, it, it's, it's a bit like, you know, it's, I mean, like mental health is a, a big issue that we have to also break a lot of silence uh, around to it because coming from the culture and religion background of African um, refugees as myself, and then also, you know, many of my uh, fellow um, activists and members of uh, Afro Rainbow Austria uh, also goes through their, uh, of with mental health. So, uh, the project is more focused on being the bridge of um, accessing the mental health that is being provided by the international, I mean, by regular uh, organizations here in Austria. Uh, and um, and then working with the, with the clients, which is uh, the queer you know, refugees here in Austria. Um, yeah, it's, um, and then also like I ha it has another uh, center which is also self-defense and de-escalation and, and also creating a safe belonging uh, community. Okay, so I was a little bit distracted because I think my connection is not so good so I'm not fully understanding everything. Um, but uh, you tried to explain uh, the project a little bit, right? At Queer Base, um, talking about providing a space, right, uh, within this project. Um, so, what does this mean in the context of queer refugees? Providing a safe space for queer refugees in Austria. Um, again, it's like also um, uh, coming back to also like. Uh, centering it to what we do at um, Afro Rainbow Austria. Um, it's about creating a space which is very safe and um, which is also creating a belongingness because um, you can be, I mean, like, you know, when we talk about safe, it's like, you know, it's a very elusive word uh, to use and it, it differs from places to places and um, also from context to context. And so creating a, a, a space that is African, that is queer, is very essential because uh, as an African queer person, I can go through places which are like queer, uh, friendly or queer centered the space here in, uh, in Europe Central. Um, but, you know, seeing my body not being reflected or not being represented in a spaces um, is, a, is a struggle by itself. And also it plays uh, in our mental health. It plays into also in our, uh, in a physical um, of our beingness. So um, it's, it is, so it's like, you know, that's why it's the very important, the work of um, ARA, to center ourselves into uh, into this being, uh, which is being African, queer, and um, refugee, or like you know, with the background, uh, with migrant background, in Europe Central. Before before this online talk today, we talked a little bit about what we want to talk, like what which issues we want to raise. And I just want to ask you whether you can give us a little insight about the situation of queer people, uh, specifically in this case in Ethiopia, because that's your background. Um, what's it like for queer people to be in Ethiopia? What it means to be queer in Ethiopia, it's, um, um, 
it's me it means a lot of things um it means um at times dangerous it also at times also um home because it's also like you know i even in the midst of all those that danger and then in the midst of all that discrimination and everything so also i was um lucky enough to create a space uh, that is uh, i which i call home for myself um but the, uh, but but also like you know that is also has a very privileged point of view um because when we talk about being safe um safety is hugely connected with also how are how are you resourced like you know what like you know for instance the more money that you have and you know you're a bit uh, removed from the danger that comes uh with it so i i've known people who has um all these security cards and and different kinds of things they own a well protected car and everything where they cannot be like you know where they're like you know 365 uh well um what is it like you know where pro- protected because they have the privilege of uh creating their own security so it's it ranges into uh, so many things um uh, as an ethiopian uh i think this goes also the same to a lot of african bodies um not to just also like you know invalidate the my experience which is also that's why i'm here because of my activism work it's because that it's no longer safe to live uh, in a space that i called my entire life home um but at the same time also it's also very important to recognize also there are queer people uh, who has the privilege and manage also to uh, create that security for themselves and exist in the space uh, which is super homophobic and transphobic but uh but manage to create their own safety Mm-hmm. But there again it's probably really important to look at these intersections of of classism, racism and being LGBTQ and different forms of oppression, right? Because as yeah. you mentioned, economic and financial background uh, has such an important role. It's not just about being LGBTQ, it's also about being LGBTQ and what financial background you have and what um yeah we we are not just um queer right like you know queer our queerness is just um one part of who we are um uh, we came well, i mean we claim multiple identities like you know like for instance like you know if i go uh person by person uh on the member of let's say um afro rainbow austria it's like you know we have you know um engineers we have uh, like you know artists we have um um cook we have uh these are like you know like you know from like you know from the professional point of view but like we also have like you know gender non confirming people we have uh gay lesbians and bisexual people we have uh, like you know couples we have like you know it's it's like you know we claim uh multiple identity so like you know with that also multiple identity also comes risk and also um and then also blessing at the same time so it's um i mean like you know, it's a very layered one for instance like you know as 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 a non binary uh, black um uh, a refugee person uh my level of um visibility and also like the the uh, the, the danger that comes with it is absolutely different than mm, others um also again like you know the um, like you know the danger that comes with being a um, black woman and lesbian and also and, and like you know it's like it, it comes it's it, it has like you know so many uh things as we claim all those identities but also with that also like you know uh, with this current structures that we're living which is fully um 
built by patriarchy and also built by white supremacies. And so it's like, it's really, um, it's like, it's a blessing, but at the same time, also there are so many struggles that we also um, try to break and work to break as well. So it's true. It's like, you know, it's, it is very multiple, like, with those identities also, like, you know, how we access as resources is also different. Um, how we are exposed to resources and how we are allowed to have access to those reports. I mean, uh, resources uh, to have. In how far would you say these layers of oppressions, as you, as you say, uh, play a role in the asylum seek process also in Austria? Like, you know, as a person who went through it, um it's a very dehumanizing uh, experience safety is a very elusive word but also again there is a biggest assumptions and also like you know an intention of uh image building that like you know oh europe is amazing uh very easy and easy to live um for anybody but like you know that's not the reality um uh, and even like, you know, to go through that asylum seeking process and, and then to be allowed to be considered you're worthy enough to be in and to go through that like one by one process is a very dehumanizing uh, experience personally for me. And I like, you know, speaking of from my own personal experience, I went through it for seven months and that did so many um, damage and so many um, like, you know, he heavy things on my mental health and physical health as well. Um, but like, you know, we have, we have, we have like, you know, queer people who's been asking asylum for 10, 12, 13 years. We have uh, queer people asking for asylum or to be allowed to enter into um, the so-called safe space uh, for queer, which is like, you know, uh, five, six, and like, you know, all countless years uh, to be allowed. And it's such a dehumanizing um, experience. Um, so it's like which also again as as a, as as an organizations which which like you know creating these visibilities and speak, uh, speaking about it and also working on these issues um, that's why it's very important for us to highlight such kind of things and to have like you know a higher standard um, for us to exist in a dignified way. Um, because like, you know, people have a tendency of uh, comparing safety into, uh, oh, just because I was in Ethiopia and like, you know, I was being prosecuted, uh, like, you know, to be killed. Um, now that I am not here, uh, oh, it's safe, uh, safer, but like, um, that should not be our standard. Our standard should be like, you know, uh, to access um, all the heterosexuals, people, uh, white heterosexuals, European people, the resource that they are accessing. Um, um, and even that is also is very questionable things because, you know, it, uh, as we discussed earlier also, it's intersectionally, there are so many issues, like people are still working on it, but like, you know, we have to be to that level of understanding saying like, you know, when we talk about safety, when we talk about being safe, um, we have to base ourselves to that definition. So it's, it's a, in my personal experience and on, and even if I, I cannot speak on others, uh, um, experience, but it says it is a, like it, it's a dehumanizing experience. <laughs> When we talked beforehand, you mentioned that you even faced some um, experiences of physical violence yourself. Yes, yes. I mean, like, you know, because, oh, yeah, when we are talking about, like, you know, how safe um, Europe is, like, you know, for instance, after I came here, I, I myself was attacked three, four times um, here in Europe. But like, you know, um, that's not the image and the reality that is um, um, being first read. 
because it's like you know if i am if i'm being judged for being queer um that one or like you know being impressed uh, for being queer then i might i might not be impressed for being black if i am being impressed for being black maybe i might not be in being impressed for being um gender non confirming or non binary person so it's like you know it's it's a very um elusive that's why I, that's why i said it's very difficult um word or like concept for us to say like you know safe safety um yeah thank you for sharing your experience and um mm -hmm. yes i want to know i want to ask you said you were speaking of the asylum process is a very dehumanizing process and what are some of the aspects that we should really take a look at and really focus on when we look at queer refugees for example when it comes to housing or accommodation or work or even access to queer communities what are like some of the key issues that we should be looking at taking again my personal experience also like you know you get a positive asylum and then you're like boom you're drop into the system that is designed built to reject your body uh and that's why also like uh that's that is exactly the main reason why uh ara is here because you know to highlight those things and to create a support systems for um for existing as a queer black and refugee uh here in austria because that, that like you know we like it, we've been we we're getting dropped into a system that is um like designed not to recognize our body and that recognition work is um has to be done challenged and also um um like bring into the light um that like you know there are there's so many issues that we need to work there is so many issue that we need to work on housing there are so many issues that we need to work on um work environment and also like you know the kind of work we are being allowed even if we have the qualification even if we have the um, the ample experience um to what kind of work are we being allowed because like you know one example we can give is also what is happening during the uh covid-19 now lockdown and how they like you know the european nation at the moment is like asking for refugees migrant um doctor who is constantly being rejected by the system um not recognized not valued for their experience and expertise but again like you know when such kind of a uh, very heavy um pandemic comes and there is a shortage we being called right so it's um so it is um there has to be a, there is a lot of work that need to be done there is um in this on, on this areas um also there is a lot of work that need to be done um on racism also within the lgbti community um just because people identify as queer um goes into this very definitions of how oppressions work because oppressions always works because oh i, I i'm oppressed because i understand all kinds of oppressions but in reality that's not how um you know we i we, so many of us have a, an experience of being rejected yet again for being black so it's very layered there has to be a lot of um there has to be a lot of work um that we are doing as um ara and and then also like you know the very essence and the the main reason what why we are um why we are organizing ourselves why we are creating visibility that why we are uh saying all these things because of all this uh, intersectional oppressions that exist in the system okay um i'm not sure but maybe it's time to open up the debate because we have some of the uh, leading activists from afro rainbow austria also in this um yes like here today so it feels a bit weird just talking <laughs> without even 
giving the space to you guys. Is there anything you want to add on, on, on this point or anything you want to say? I would also like, like, I would also, in addition to what Faris already said, you know, it's very important for us to also reflect on the role of the white LGBTI communities in Austria in support because we collectively are still foreigners and strangers to this whole bureaucratic system that was not made for us in the first place. You know, so it's also a lot of work. Like I'm pushing the work to <laughs> to Paul, actually, you know, actually to <laughs> to Paul and to uh, the the institute too. You know, to say it's still a lot of work. I mean, allyship is also a fantasy in this. In this, you know, a lot of people who preach intersectionality and um, being allies and all the things that come with it in this part of the world. For me, it means it's true allyship is still a learning process for the Western world because one, they don't know the power they have. And I'm making reference to the white LGBTI community in Australia. They don't know the power they have and they don't know or understand the level of privilege they are born into. And also calling them and making them aware of this privilege has nothing to do with, you know, you hear this common argument, oh, because, um, no, you, you, you are having a hard time. I'm also having a hard time. I haven't eaten. I don't have a job. But yes, 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 we all know that, blah, 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 blah. But their skin color doesn't add up to, you know, that's not the thing that people start the conversation with, you know, and that's, it's making our own struggle like completely different, you know. So you, it's, um, it's also the role of the, <laughs> of, uh, uh, say, you know, of, yeah, of the white LGBTI community to table this argument and to, you know, we, like what Fari said, we are, we are beyond um, just uh, seeking asylum because we're also a community that inhibits people that have literally people that were born here and people that migrated here for love, but they're still uh, people of African descent and people that came here for different reasons, for holidays and for everything, you know. So the question is, how would um, institutions are already established and also doing research in terms of the Afri Afro-Asian Institute. No, they're doing research and doing like real theory and, and practical work in this thing, how they would also come in to influence what we're doing. Because what, what we literally did for us was uh, um, uh, <clears throat> um, basically to create a space where we would first come and breathe, you know? before, you know, in not walking into a space where the person, the, you know, you, you just notice you're different, you know, but here just walk in and you know, you don't even have to think about that first, you know? So we are still learning, like we don't know the bureaucratic system. We are learning it. So it will be, you know, the job of the bigger uh, Hosey and all the big names and all these conferences to, like address these things like we would want to have like serious conversation but it's also very uh it's very hard to you know to support genuine allies because a lot of people want to use black people to beautify their pictures and for me it's not interesting for me <laughs> i rather eat kebab and walk on the street and let people look at me you know so um if 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 institutions are willing to have we are also um most of us actually are very genuine in our struggle, all of us, you know, like we all have different stories and we are all differently the experts of our own experiences, you know. So if they really want to um, build genuine alliances and stuff, they would have to, you know, start, you know, being this connecting factor between us and the bureaucracy because they know it. And sincerely from experience, you know, I get a lot of trash from finance, um, which they would not ask a predominantly white organization, you know, but because they also gamble, they gamble, they gamble with us, you know, oh, we don't, you know, they send like very super annoying informations and mails and, you know, and then you hit them back and they're like, oh, okay, you know, yeah, you know, they, which normally they would not ask people, you know, and this is like one of a brother, just like when we had our Strassen Fest and the police came, I don't know, like four times. And if we we're all white, they won't come. You know, <laughs> and so things like that is where um, the white allies would have to step in and, you know, start addressing it because we can only, I mean, we have energy to do that now, but sincerely, I don't know how long I would <laughs> be on the streets of Europe, 
you know, but at some point we'll drop in the towel and yeah, another people will have to continue. But if true allyship has to grow and trust, because we don't trust the white community, you know, <laughs> to be very frank, we trust them like this, you know. We are open for conversation. I mean, there are some people I do really respect. I, I won't downgrade that. There are some allies, uh, yeah, that I hold very dear to my heart. I would jump in front of a train for them, you know. But we're talking. We're not talking about individuals now. We're talking about the community as a whole. So if they want to really build trust within this, uh, they have to put our issues first because when our issue is being solved, then everybody's happy. Everybody's issue is being solved because every issue is also interconnected to our struggles, you know? So if the struggle of racism is being the target, you know, in racism, there's poverty, you know, there's sexism, there's mis misogyny, you know, all these other elements are all fused into it. So if you, if they tackle you know, if they tackle and they really want to be inclusive and intersectional in it, they would have to, you know, start giving us the front line and taking the bullets for us. <laughs> um, just to piggyback on what Henry said is like also like, you know, the understanding of like, you know, how racism is also diverse. <laughs> <laughs> because there isn't a diversity uh, or like, you know, or like, you know, for, for the sake of like, you know, what, like uh, Henry mentioned, like, you know, just like, you know, to beautify the picture, like, you know, that's like when, like, you know, it, it, it comes to that point, like, you know, uh, oh, is that diversity what it means, diversity? Because just like, you know, we have that picture or like, you know, and then again, also in institutions when they invite people of color and black and queer people to the institutions uh, for a sake of diversity, which is fantastic. But like, you know, is the work is done. Like, you know, to, when we are being invited, are we being pulled to educate people and to do all the works or is it the work is done? And then like, so that like, because it's also, it has, it has a lot of uh, weight on, um, on the work because um, there is racism in diversity. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to just add that. Thank you. Thank you for your words. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah. So I think right now we don't, we're not even beginning to understand what impact the uh, whole pandemic also has on the situation of so many people around the world. But uh, even yesterday, the UN General Secretary um, said that it's having a specific impact on most vulnerable people, also on LGBTI people. So what, what do you think are the impacts on queer people, on LGBTI people going to be who are already not safe maybe and who are already trying to, um, to seek asylum somewhere or flee the country? Yeah, I mean, um, like one thing what we definitely uh, know is also like, you know, there is a heavy restrictions of uh, movement of people uh, because one of the characteristics of uh, preventing this disease is limiting the movement of people. Uh, our movement being limited is not new for us. Um, it's very, it's very common things. And then like, you know, for also like, you know, for people who pass that uh, experience, traumatic experience is also a triggering experience again, to be caged again, back to uh, not being able to move, but also like, again, uh, um, people on the border, people on in camp and people are in the process of like, you know, being from one places to another places and all that being stopped. And and, and again, like, you know, with when we are talking about, again, Henry, when she mentioned it, like, you know, uh, when we are pointing out privilege, people also always point out, like, you know, the, the, um, the problem they face. And then it, you can imagine when all the entire world in the pre-existing uh, oppressive space, when everybody is being, like, you know, being, like, you know, hit by one thing, uh, but like that heating is different 
for me, for others, and like you know, for queer people, and and for already marginalized people, is mentally triggering for a lot of uh, for a lot of us. Uh, it's also is very um, limiting. Uh, it's like you know, a lot of a lot of. Um, a lot of colleagues of uh, colleagues of us, like a fellow uh, queer um, African bodies, are being caged, uh, and also like you know the um, the number of measures, uh, preventive measures that is being taken, is um, is also very uh, pervasively controlling, pervasively limiting, and. Um, that's one area and then the other area is also like you know um the access to this prevention and health uh, and all this um things that is being laid out uh for to prevent this uh pandemic because if we are talking about um preventing the pandemic and then uh, making resources available for the general public you can imagine how that like you know uh, when it comes to distributing it, who is going to access what and uh, how it's going to be accessed. So um, even um, like the, the very simple things, we've seen so many things uh, online um, that like, you know, but like, you know, African bodies being rejected uh, from the hospitals. Um, and also like, you know, um, also like, you know, uh, we are also here in the space of Afro, uh, Asian spaces, but also like we've seen how the African um, um, migrant being treated in um, in China. Um, also, like we've seen how the um, people with Asian background around the world being treated. Um, how all these things are being uh, surfaced. Uh, the pre-existing things. The pre. Uh, the pre. Um, oppressive existing systematic and structural ex um, oppressing uh, things that was already existing were like you know coming to light and people are like shamelessly without any um, things just uh, doing all kinds of things and um, marginalizing peoples need also to recognize and see also peoples even who are stuck into with the homophobic with their homophobic parents with their homophobic um housemates with their homophobic um uh camp so like you know so so many uh, so many things so it's it, it is the impact is immense um there has to be a lot of work that need to be done to address um, this impact. And also like, you know, um, the major that is being taken to control or to mitigate this pandemic is also very, very, very much of like, you know, a controlling bodies on a general, but like we can, we can see it, uh, how it is controlling, uh, more controlling to the others. Um, we can also see again, like, you know, even here in Austria cases, like where, where the lockdown was officially being lifted, but again, like, you know, um, some of the camps uh, are still in lockdown um, and some of the camps are still um, uh, uh, encountering infections and all this and it's 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 really it's really very pervasive and very strong and it needs a lot of work um i think um i'm i'm a very optimistic person but at the same time also like you know we really have our work cut out to us going into because uh it's very heavy okay and I would like to add to what Faris said, you know, in addition to what you said, it's very, like, everything you said aligns to the simple fact that, you know, you would ask whose life is more important, you know, who's, um, yeah, you know, what they are preaching about, um, protecting lives and blah, 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 and all these security measures is for us to live and shoot and all this, shit, like they're saying, but in the question is, whose life are they really protecting? You know, uh, we're still protecting, <laughs> still the very, you know, yeah, 
only from the spe uh, from the speeches you hear from the arts unser schützen unser österreicher unser österreicherin unser grenze unser exactly the things people i mean <laughs> we are fighting against is exactly what people like me are supposed to stay home to pretend they're schützen you know yeah and still using you know it's still the same argument on uh, for example what the fpo that time used to uh, brainwash majority neutral people in court on why they should not let muslim migrants come into the country because they come to pollute come to rape come to marry their wives yeah and that's what people want to hear you know and they're not they're not basing the fact that it's they are human beings and their religion has nothing or people's mischief and people's criminal per record has nothing to do with their religion but they sell it to you know to the masses you know they feed off people's fear and that's exactly the same tactic they are using now to say we're protecting our austria world. so what happens to the ones that are not austrians you know or the ones in the camp like um um um, um faris has clearly said you know or the um upstand height of one meter and you know and uh the two meter and all the nonsense they are saying you know who is there measuring all the ones in the camps and on the borders and to say now people have the legal, you know, certificate or legal assurance to go out there and be racist, you know? And yeah, and everybody's um, completely feeding off the, you know, the fear of, yes, we're trying to protect our people. We're trying to, our people. Any question is who are our people? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's their people are not my people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think even as you mentioned in the in the queer community, so it's about being left out of the picture, right? When, even when we talk about, for example, issues in the queer community about visibility and LGBT rights, it's always the question about like whose visibility and whose LGBT rights and whose visibility and LGBT rights and and situations are completely forgotten and ignored, right? And uh, maybe coming towards the end maybe I would like to ask you um, what are some of the things you were speaking of allyship Henry what are some of the things that um, maybe people watching this video or um, LGBTI NGOs in general or just people can do to support ARA to support the work of Afro Rainbow Austria and and to support uh, African queer refugees in Austria <laughs> No, I would like want to say in reference to the I'm going to tag my comment now on alliances and um I won't detach it for the COVID nineteen situation because like Fari said, that's why we're having this format now. You know, things like um like all the relief all the fund relief uh, everything out there. You know, but they are all, if you read the, if you sit down in front of your computer and you hear people, you know, like Ilga printed a whole, um, for example, you know, people are bringing out fund relief, blah, blah, blah. But when you go into the, especially in reference to Austria, when you go into it and you start reading it and you see it's already discriminatory, you know, it's limited to some people. So you have to have, for example, you have to have a Stagberger shot or you have to be in this institution or you have to be, but these are like realities that don't, or barely exist in communities that we represent, you know? So they've already in this um, relief, quote unquote, um, package, you know, that would make people's lives, people, those people's lives easier. They have automatically excluded the people or some people that <laughs> would, would basically need them, yeah. So for me, allyship in this tone, in this, just this very, very small, um, example would mean someone reads it, say Paul sits down or Jose sits down, reads one of these and goes, hey, we would not accept this kind of thing until whoever is responsible for it edits, you know, blah, 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 or makes this application, for example, on behalf of someone that would need it from our organization, for example, or we would, yeah, we can sit down and talk and list the number of people that would need it and definitely would need it because most of us or uh, most of people in community we represent kind kind of like work with people. So with this lockdown, their works don't exist anymore. And some of them have even lost their jobs and all that. So if they sit down and they say, hey, 
it's about disobedience, right? You write the project, you get the project, and then you redistribute it into the communities that need it. Those kind of allyship and something the state will not, will not give to you as an option, but it is an option because if you want to be a true activist, you have to think of strategic ways of disobeying those laws that actually put you in these things that you're protesting against. Yeah, very true. Um, and then just to add up on that, because this, you just put it in a very beautifully way. Um, also, like for me, allyship also need to be based from, uh, from a solidarity point of view. Um, it's not like, you know, um, it's not about being feeling sorry for me or like, you know, for anybody, uh, we're completely able to people, uh, but like we're systematically and structurally challenged and, and, um, the allyship should come from solidarity point of view. Uh, that's one. And also like, you know, allyship is also a, an advocacy work an advocacy work and then when we do advocacy works also it is it is a contribution not an attribution yeah so it's like you know people need to see it from that perspective as, as well also like um people need to learn also like to be the background of um of this work uh, and contribute to the change. I need to stand in solidarity with with this group of people, with this group of marginalized people, and contribute my part to uh, to the change that needs to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to say, sorry, that we need to also like maybe create a true forum where everybody, we have to start redefining everything, you know, and we, and in redefining, we have to re-educate and be open, um, be open minded to relearning some of the things that, I mean, we, in quotes, I'm talking about the um, predominantly white society, you know, to redefine, relearn, you know, and we, uh, Ara now, we'll be glad to join in in this process of you know uh, having an open an open discussion, you know, and a genuine open discussion. Because the thing I experienced too, I don't want to call names, is like, is this is this is this whiteness in this space? And whiteness not because of color, but because of I know better than you. You know, this whole privileged this whole you know i'm more you know i'm austrian i'm educated i'm magister bs like doctor blah 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 and so i know more than you you know and this that thinking would not get anybody anywhere because yeah i mean like i said we are the experts in our own lives so we know more than what they've read in their books that is <laughs> that is guaranteed you know so yeah in terms of that allyship if they want like genuine allyships i mean Afro Rainbow and I speak for uh, Afro Rainbow myself. Mm. Yeah, because th there is a knowledge in, in experiencing something in your body. When we go through, when you are like, you know, when you are experiencing things in your body, it, it has a huge memory that nobody cannot have. And like, you know, that needs to be recognized. Hi. Hey. It's very, very nice hearing you all speak. And um, I actually, I didn't have anything to say, but I'm just, I, I'm happy I came. And I'm happy this is happening. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming, babe. Yeah, I'm very happy I came. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wanted to ask, um, what kind of uh, moment in your activist um, practices was very uh, um, helpful for for respecting more diverse people and, and realities. Is there a good example that happened in Austria where, um, yeah, that worked well? I mean, like, you know, if you're asking us, like, uh, uh, particularly that I can remember on so many things that we've been doing uh, for the past three years in uh, ARA, I mean, like, you know, I can give you so many examples, but also like, you know, just uh, one of my really like, you know, emotional and then really like, you know, such a beautiful day was the Ara Street Festival um, and how everybody came together to have uh, such a beautiful 
uh, day. Um, but also, like you know, we were faced with uh, faced with a uh, with a lot of uh, with a lot of um, resistance because you know from the get go there was a lot of uh, problem from the surrounding. But it was um, it was where people with a privilege came and um, uh, and help um, uh, amplified and magnified the work that need to be uh, um, done during that day and how it, it just also like you know uh, went so beautifully and and the joy that brought. The, the level of joy that brought to a lot of um, queer and African body during that day. And still people are carrying that day with them today because it's like, you know, we invited a lot of people from across Europe and they came and then like, you know, like, you know, all of them, they were saying, this is the first time, like, you know, seeing um, an event being fully organized by uh, black queer people and and being all of us together and centering ourselves and um and be, that being celebrated uh was really really the highlight of my life like uh it, it happened uh on um september and it was it was it was it was like you know such a beautiful and um event that like you know gives gave me joy and hope but like you know there are so many so many uh activity that uh through our activism work uh that we saw um we i can name so many things but i would also would like to give this uh the floor to henry and also asha to say one of what, what is their highlighted moment of like you know in our activism work as ara that we saw where everybody come together and then just really highlight joy <laughs> and then my my era as well <laughs> so um yeah wow wow as faris was was telling i was remembering uh it was actually one of the first events that I like took major responsibility in organizing and it was such a important and amazing experience just to have that in, you know, community and community work and, and experience that with, with, yeah, in, in community. So yeah, I remember being so nervous, <laughs> but it was, but it was so nice and such a, a great event. And I really, yeah, I really, replay I can replay scenes in my head it was amazing because yeah really came together and we had so many different inputs and and perspectives and art forms and concentrated in this in the space the physical space that it took place and that is also a very important space in Vienna and holds a lot of you know a lot of power empowerment so yeah so it was, it was very, very special, very, very special. And I just really hope that we can do more of that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just very grateful. Just a short question, where was it exactly? Uh, um, it was the Ara Street Festival. Oh, but where, where in Vienna was it? It was oh, at the uh, Planet 10, yeah. Yeah, Planet 10. Maybe Henry wants to say something to Planet 10. Yeah. Okay, I'll first say, like, in addition to that, I really did like the event at the Rat House. Oh, yes, me, that too. <laughs> that was a very, uh, that was a very, um, it was a very important, um, important, important thing that we got that location because that space on the room we used was also used to celebrate, um, to give our words out and stuff. And so it felt like we were giving each other our words, you know, and this is, um, uh, it's like taking by force the, um, the visibility we need and we were demanding it, you know, so it was more like in your face. I mean, I'm still very grateful to, I don't want to call her name because I don't want to ally to any political party, but I'll still call her as a friend, like her. You know, so it was, um, yeah, it was very important that we um, 
took up that space because that was also um, a very a turning point for us because we took our name to to the heart of Vienna, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was a glorious day. Oh, that was also really beautiful. <laughs> and it was very I mean, as I <laughs> all together, you know, it was yeah. one if one person had gone there as a guest to talk and blah blah blah, and at the end of the day they would sweep it under the rug, you know. But it was more powerful that we all went there and we all took the stage uh, um, together. Mm. I think it actually also happens just two years ago today, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just remembering, like, imagining me as a child growing up in Austria and being a person of African descent and seeing people, you know, like our members represented in these spaces is just, yeah, just, you know, to, if, I had that, if I had seen something like that back then, you know, I think a lot of, of things just would have been different also in, in, in other people's life that have similar realities to mine. So it's, yeah, it's just very special. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's it. The power to be seen is very powerful. You say everything, but I am thinking also like you and the uh, Arab festival. Um, what, yeah, Estu Fest was amazing. And also, what's important to our age was also that we get some also um, uh, every Thursday demonstration that we also was together with our organization and that we was there and also activism. So this is also some important thing about also our Afro Rainbow area. Yeah. In alliance to what Asia said is also very that's what makes us special because we in our space we don't all have to be activists, you know? That's a great thing. So it's like we have we have regular people that are just chilling and chill out. We have troublemakers, we have <laughs> activists, we have you know, we have it's, you just have to, it's just a space to exist, you know, and also, you know, that when we start empowering each other on conversations we have to have, we need to have, you know, and yeah, we leave everybody to their own energy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think now we, yeah, we are already <laughs> talk one hour. I think it will be good like this, but yeah, anyway, you give a lot of um, impulses how to, yeah, how to continue the, the discourse and how to, yeah, try to make you more visible and, um, yeah, put more uh, or hearable also in in the Austrian society mm. and over and there above that too, of course. Yeah. Let me just say thank oh, you for for so actively taking part in this um, debate. Let me also say, since you haven't mentioned it, that of course it's also possibly uh, possible to donate, right, to ARA. Just go to the website of ARA, Afro Rainbow Austria, and make a financial donation. It will be uh, appreciated. And then let me just uh, give the, the final words to Faris. Um, so, yeah, like thank you for organizing this uh, event. Um, and then it's very also important because also um, we need to highlight on like, you know, when we set, when the, the institutions of Af uh, Afro-Asian institution, institution, it's very good, important, it's very important and very mandatory to see the Afro aspect of the, the like, you know, that institute. So it's, um, it's good that we uh, start this um, baby step and I hope this would be like, you know, um, a good beginning for us to collaborate on so many things and really uh, do so many uh, works together. Thank you. Hi. Do you have anybody here in Salzburg too? Or, or do you have somebody that is connected with you too? Um, in Salzburg? In Salzburg, um, 
No, uh, currently uh, uh, ARA is based in uh, Vienna, but we do work around Aus uh, all over Austria. So um, we collaborated, for instance, uh, with Hosey Salzburg, Linz Salzburg, I mean, sorry, uh, Hosey Linz um, and different organizations across um, Austria um, <clears throat> uh, as, you know, as a, this is something also that we are going to expand and progress to, uh, but at the moment uh, we are based in Vienna. Uh, or like you know, every corner of Austria is very important because um, comparatively Vienna is good. But like you know, even like you know, for me, I lived in Salzburg for a while, for one year and a half, and and Vienna is absolutely different when it comes to seeing people who look like me um, than Salzburg. Um, and it's <clears throat> maybe I'll talk a bit about like, you know, that expansion work. Yeah. I mean, we're still pretty young <clears throat> to compare ourselves to a lot of LGBTI organizations in, in Austria generally. And in the bigger mirror, we hope to go outside of Austria too, you know, because we also get people writing in from Finland and from, um, um, Sweden asking and from 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 the states too asking if they can like um take in the name and expand we hope that would be possible I, I, that would be a dream and in austria we used to have um <laughs> we used to have Paris in salzburg you know but we also I, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> and in the future you know it will be very like really important to reach uh to have like um um, grassroots fellowships in every state in Austria that would be uh, a big thing I mean we would probably maybe start with a mini conference but everything still boils down to fund and alliances but we, we would, we're still thinking and yeah after the COVID-19 we can <laughs> mm. yeah. So, yeah anytime if you have a conference or something like that and you need some collaborative fundings uh, you can ask us and if you have any um bigger uh, um, like a country wide um, campaign or something please contact us so we can also make some campaigning too for you mm. yeah. we will, we will do. thank you thank you thank you for the invitation and thank yes. you for Paris <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And thank you for and the Yura. Yes. Thank you. And then and then Paul. And Paul and Yes. And AI Salzburg. <laughs> thank you for being thank you everybody. Your input and your experience. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> thank you also Paul for the moderation. <laughs> Yes, you are really amazing. Thank you so much. Shall we end or should we keep on? Like you're going to cut the video or? <laughs> yeah.